Hey guys, this is Chris with Financial Fitness, and I just got through interviewing Rob Keynes with Gold Silver Pros. I'm going to leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. We covered some ground in this interview. I'm going to cut, I'm going to break it up in about three or four different videos to put it in bite-sized pieces because I don't want you to miss anything we talked about. And before I get started on the interview, I want to let you know about the Red Pill Expo that's going on in Lafayette, Louisiana on November 6th and 7th. We're going to talk about things that we cannot talk about here on YouTube. I hope I see you there. Like and subscribe, ring the bell. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Financial Fitness and this is Rob Kane. I would like to talk about how China slid under the radar into Taliban. You know, they slid into Afghanistan mm -hmm. and and slapped Taliban on the back and said, hey, I see you got all this nice military equipment. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I, I can only imagine the phone call they got. Hey, we're going to leave the lights on, you know, keys in it. Uh, it's all yours. We're getting out. This is the stupidity of the way that we got out of Afghanistan. We left a lot of our military equipment there and China's got it. And could they use it, you know, in espionage? Sure. Could they reverse engineer it and know how our stuff is built? Yeah. And not only that, China is very smart with Afghanistan. So is Russia because they Afghanistan has a bunch of rare earth metals, has a bunch of gold and silver, you know, has a bunch of oil and gas. So Afghanistan's got all sorts of stuff that China's looking at chomping it, you know, you know, licking mm -hmm. its lip, chomping at the bite, trying to get a hold of all that stuff. Uh, Afghanistan's rich in, in supplies. And for all the years that we were there, I don't think the U.S. ever figured out maybe we need to, to grab some of these, you know, maybe we need to do a deal with Afghanistan and get some of these, these rare earth minerals. Cause you, you can't build your military without rare earth minerals. You can't build your economy without, you can't have a, you know, computers and stuff like that. And so it's, it, it's it, the, the Chinese and Russia have figured out, you know, how to take advantage of that situation. Yeah. And they're not paying those people good. They're no. not treating them like we treat them. No. They're going to say, you do this or we're going to kill you dead. You know, there, there's, it's a slavery situation. And uh, there is part of the ruling class in China. A lot of people don't know this is an ancient ruling class. It's, it's one of something like 11 or 13 clans, I guess, in, in China. And one of them is a very racist that believes only Chinese people of a certain bloodline. Think Hitler, for example, but a Chinese version. I had no, I, I haven't heard this before. So, so there, a lot of them are in power and, and they're, they, they believe in the superiority of their own race. And, 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 you know, every society's had, I'm, I'm not blaming China. Every society's had these people. They just exist. Sure. Right. Yeah, so a lot elite. of them, a lot of, that's why they treat other countries not so great. So for example, if it, when the Taliban tried to get into China, China sent their police over there and just beat them to death and threw them in prisons. You know, it wasn't like in Europe where it's like, okay, welcome in all, you know, the, the Arab migration. When they try to migrate to China, uh, they put them in concentration camps. So, so, yeah, so there is part of the Chinese government and it doesn't really view the rest of the world as being equal to them. And that's the dangerous thing about China. If those people get into power and get their hands, you know, on all the military buttons, that's where you could see war because I don't think those people were, would stop, you know, before they tried to, to empire build and subjugate people around them. They hate the Japanese with a passion. They hate the Australians, but they want the resources because Australia has resources. They hate the Middle Easterners. <laughs> they hate the West. And, you know, if that specific group rises to power, like we've seen at, at other times in history, you know, uh, then the world's going to have a problem because th those guys, you know, they don't think like you and me, they're, they're not nice people. No, they're, I think they love America. I just don't think they love Americans. Yeah. I think, I think that's the big, <laughs> that's the big deal. Um, they would love to be here. They're running out of room over there. Your, your cities you were talking about earlier that they've been building, you know, they're having the Evergrande debacle. That was kind of a way to stimulate the economy right to make it look like it's going good over there and these cities are top notch from what i understand they're very impressive top oh, of the I've, line I've, i i have chinese friends in the u.s that have flown or have gone to china and come back and said oh my god their airports are ridiculous 
like their infrastructure, their airports, their rail system, their cities are just like any, nothing we've seen in the U S. Wow. That reminds me of their Navy. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about the Sprout Islands and I meant to bring it up, but you're, you know, we're just going the, these ships that they've been building are like smart warships. Mm-hmm. They don't have the tonnage. I know they rate Navy ships and tonnage there, but it's got about half the tonnage or less than what we've got. But these ships I was looking at are nuts. You know, they're all automated and it's really impressive on that aspect of their Navy. And I don't know how close they are to a blue water Navy. I, I can only speculate. I'm not the authority on this, um, but I know it's extremely terrifying to know that somebody that does forced organ harvesting is building an elite Navy that can even rival the U S well, you know? going back to how China steals, you know, Western technology there back when I was researching Nortel and doing all this cybersecurity research, uh, cause that was my field back then. There were two U.S. high-ranking military officials who uh, at about the same time came out in the mainstream news and said that China had stolen all their designs for the stealth fighters, our nuclear weapon technology. In other words, they had taken all of our military and they'd stolen it all, all of our plans for everything. So a lot of what China's building, their their, uh, stealth fighter is based upon ours, but then they took it and they made improvements. So they're taking our designs and they're taking technology to get from Russia and that they're building and they're building like a super, a super military force. And they're Um, really good at building stuff cheap. Yeah. They're they're like the best at that. They build it with nothing and they pay the people that build it nothing. Right. You know, so they can build however many more. It is terrifying. (laughs) It really is. They, they have a strong military. It's, it's not as big as the U S but it's, it's strong. So I, I'm not sure if I were the U S I'd want to take on the Chinese right now. I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to let, if they do something towards China or Japan or any of those places, I I think we're, I don't think we're going to make a move. Maybe I I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But I I hope it doesn't come to that, but you know, it throughout history, Stuff like this happens. So you can't say it can't happen because it's happened before. I think best case scenario with the whole China situation, even if we don't go to war, they're going to become a dominant superpower. But that I, I'm 100% certain of. So they're, you know, best case scenario, it's a Cold War like we have with Russia. It's espionage. It's cyber theft. It's, you know, competing in the marketplace. Uh, you know, building up their, their military arsenals. Um, and, and they're still going to be a threat. And, and China is making deals, like I said, with everybody else. So the world is shrinking for the U.S. Um, it, what we talked about before the video with France and, and the oh. issue they had with the U.S. and Australia because of the subcontract, France and Germany are basically rethinking their role in NATO right now. So the U.S.'s premier military alliance with those two powers in Europe, the two dominant powers in Europe is falling apart before our eyes. And that's not being reported in the press either. So you have China rising and making all these deals. You have the U S you know, people getting tired of of doing business with the U S. And so what's happening is the world's getting smaller for the U S and and that's really what people have to be aware of. It's good. Even if we don't go to war, it's going to affect you on an everyday basis. It's going to affect the products you can get. It's going to affect your quality of life. 